Today is Thursday, April 11, 1912. The Titanic had been sailing from Cherbourg, France since last night, and it was now soon arriving at Queenstown, Ireland. Before arriving in Queenstown, there's evidence that the Titanic actually did some maneuvers and tested how well she could turn and, and sail around, and there's photographs of a very interestingly curved wake of the Titanic as photographed by Frank Brown again the uh, priest in training. Interestingly, speaking of wakes and speaking of Frank Brown, the priest from the Irish novel Finnegan's Wake was based off of Frank Brown as the author was friends with Father Frank Brown later in his life. At about 10, 10.30 it arrived into the harbor and it rounded the island, it passed Roach's light. It did not come all the way up to the quayside just like we see with Cherbourg. Now very often people say that it did not enter the Queenstown Harbor because the Titanic was too big. Well, that's not necessarily true. The Queenstown Harbor is one of the largest in the world, at least in terms of, of size and what you could fit in there. It's certainly not one of the busiest. It was definitely one of the largest, and size was not the restriction for the Titanic. In fact, it was turnaround time. By the Titanic coming in, and with two tenders coming out, the America and the Ireland, allowed the Titanic to enter the harbor pick up passengers and baggage and drop a few people off and turn around as quickly as possible and efficiently as possible and get back to sailing across the Atlantic. In Queenstown, Titanic picked up over 200 additional passengers and dropped off a small, small handful. I think it was only about seven passengers who were dropped off in Ireland, including one crewman who actually jumped ship. He signed up for Titanic's full voyage he sailed from Southampton, went over to Cherbourg, and when he got to Queenstown, he's like, psych, and he jumped off the ship, pretty much. He got onto the tender, and he left. You're not supposed to do that. White Star Line does not like that, but he did it anyway, and uh, essentially just, well, probably saved his own life. So good for him. After Queenstown, Titanic leaves behind land for the final time, with Ireland behind it, the third-class passengers, mostly ones from Ireland, gathered on the poop deck and watched their home country leave behind them onto the horizon. Third-class passenger Eugene Daly played his Ulian pipes. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's not. It's like bagpipes. It's, it's not. It's Ulian pipes, something like that. I'm sure someone in the comments knows how it's pronounced. But he played Aaron's Lament, as well as a few other Irish hymns and melodies, as his homeland disappeared behind him. And this caused a lot of the Irish immigrants to cry. They would probably never see their homeland again, even if they did survive. The rest of the day was relatively uneventful. Passengers and crew settled into their daily routines. There was some shuffling around. A few passengers in particular in second class were not happy with their accommodations and complained to the purser quite a bit. And some passengers were shuffled around. The day ended relatively uneventfully.